Hey guys, how you doing? I'm HexDSL and I'm here to talk to you about Lutris. What is Lutris? Well, according to Wiktionary.com, um, yeah, or .org, sorry, my mistake, uh, Lutra is the Latin word for an otter and Lutris is the Latin word for lots of otters. I'm not quite sure how otters fit in with the application or the project, but uh, that little fella's pretty darn cute. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, what is a Lutris? Well, they've got this paragraph here which uses very well thought out uh, grammar and spelling and sentence structure to explain eloquently what they are. Um, I could read that, but I'm not going to. Uh, what Lutris is, is an application which goes, okay, you've got your GOG games, you've got your Steam games, you've got your wine games, you've got your, your, your Steam games from Windows that run in wine, and you've got your, your other shit games, you've got your old Asura games you don't use anymore, uh, and you've got all this shit over here. And I want to put them all in one box. So when I want to play them, I can just find them all. And I haven't got to go searching around. You don't want to have to do this and start like like going to games. And, 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 and wow, that, is that really all I've got on here? Wow. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the idea is it's one launcher for all of them. Essentially doing what Steam does or what GNOME Games is trying to do. Um, I did a video recently on GNOME Games. You'll find that in the previous history of my channel where it wasn't too kind. And I said it didn't have a purpose. Um weirdly lutris kind of i don't know it, it feels like more of a, more of a driven project uh, so let's go into what what you can do with lutris first and let's ignore the other projects to do the same thing for now let's just look at what lutris does here are all my steam games um i added them by going to the website logging into the website and uh and adding steam games basically i just logged in with steam and it, it found all the games i own like a list of all the games i own and then it, they appeared in lutris and then all the ones that are installed appear. And if I go all runners, there you go. You can see all the games that aren't installed and the Windows games. And basically every game I have on Steam is on this list. But then if we just look at like Steam, that's all the Linux Steam games that I have. I think that's all the ones installed. I've got a lot of games, I don't know. Um, yeah, that no, can't be all of them. That's just the ones installed. And then I can click one and it'll just load Steam and load the game and get me playing fairly quickly, uh, which is fine because... I can use Steam for that. So at this point, I was going, eh, you know, like, like, what's the point? What's the, what's the reason for this? Um, and then I found this button here. I, I realized that all runners was a thing. And I clicked the cog thing, and I had a look down, and I looked at this. And I'm going, okay, so I can load Atari 800 games, browser games, Citra, it's a 3DS emulator or something, um, like, like Dasura, Dolphin, DOSBox. And I went down the list, and I realized as I go down the list that, this isn't just like a tiny selection of stuff it does. With the, a few notable exceptions, this is like every platform. This is like every game I'd ever have. Um, I don't see uh, the Sega CD, Mega CD, whatever it's called, wherever you are. Um, I don't see that on the list here. Um, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm going to guess you could probably get those running easy enough. Uh, and I don't, I like, there's, there's, I think there's a GameCube thing in here. That was the other one. Yeah, Dolphin does GameCube. Doesn't Dolphin do GameCube? Supported. Yeah, GameCube and Wii. Um, and it, it does even say, it does a nice job. It goes, here's what it's called. Here's what the emulator is. And this is the supported platform. So as you get down, you go, oh, cats, everything. And this was the point where I went from being really like, oh, this is pointless, to going, okay, I can see the use case for this. Not Probably not for me, but I can see the use case. I can see why someone would install this. Um, so I installed a bunch of these runners. I just went nuts. I went ham to see what would happen. And as you install runners, they appear in the side menu here. Um, I don't like the term runner. I take issue with the term runner. Um, I would prefer just like like platform maybe would be a better way of saying it. But I know what they're saying. They're like, it runs the platform. So I get why it's been a, why they thought that out and gone with the word runners. But I, I don't like the word runners. And I'd prefer this not to be a text list. I'd prefer to see like pictures of the consoles. Like, and I can like slide them around and stuff and organize them. Um, and there's a lot of stuff here, like, like I don't have any Dolphin games on here, but Dolphin appears in the list, so maybe it'd be nice to have some filtering options and stuff. Um, there's probably, there's probably stuff in here, there's, there's, there is probably stuff in here, I don't know. Um, but I thought, okay, let's see how it goes. So what it says to do is, if you click on any one of these, so let's click on um, Genesis stuff, uh, and then I hit add game. Now... If you go into uh, game options, no, no, no. Uh, See, so there you go. It goes, put it in the main folder, games. So what I tried to do is I got a couple of emulators um, for games I actually own, and I threw them in there. Uh, and I got a few uh, Windows ISOs I had from, like, DOS days and threw them in there. 
Uh, and then I threw like basically a bunch of shit all in there. No organization. I just threw it in there. And I was like, if I can throw all this shit in one folder and then I can relaunch Lutris and it magically picks it up, gold. That is amazing. Uh, it did not do that, basically. <laughs> it did not do that. You have to actually browse it. You have to actually like, like this is the games directory that I've made. See, I'll throw a bunch of crap in here. Um, you can actually click on the game. You have to like, if I want flashback, I'll click on the flashback folder and I'll go OK there. And then I've got to like go into the game options. Uh, no, the runner options. No, this is the wrong one because this is Genesis, so it won't work. But I have to select the executable file, select the resolution. Um, probably better if I actually show you one of those, wouldn't it? There's flashback. And uh, if I hit edit, oh, edit, I'll configure. There we go. Um, flashback, and I have to go like there's the executable file. Um, and then I have to tell it which directory it's in. And then I pick a graphic scaler. So it's not like the automated fantasy I had, which was. I know a lot to ask. I get that, bro. I was like, that would be so cool if I just go, here's all my shit, figure it out. Um, that would have been a, so amazing. And not impossible. I mean, like, with a basic file structure, like, okay, like, make, here's the games folder, here's the DOS games, here's the rest. Because, like, like Nintendo games and, and, and Sega games, they have, like, pretty well-established file names for the ROM images. So I don't think it'd be too hard to figure out what's what for the most part. Uh, maybe just have like a DOS or Windows folder in there, then other stuff or retro platforms. Um, but alas, it didn't, and that's okay. It was just sort of something I sort of had it as, an, as a concept. Um, now, do the games run? Yeah, they run as well as they'd run um, if you just run, like if I just load DOSBox and run a game. Uh, if I had a lot of DOS games, like a serious wedge of DOS games um, that I wanted to play, this would be a kick-ass way of displaying them because... I just throw them all in here, um, I set them all up, and then I've basically got Steam for DOS games, uh, which would kind of be pretty cool, let's be honest. Um, as a platform, if you're a retro gamer, that's probably the way to go. Um, as usual, there's the debate about the legality of ROMs, like Genesis ROMs and stuff. There is that debality, debality? That's not even a word. There is that debate about whether or not it's, a, it's, it's illegal or legal, and... And depending on where you are in the world depends on the, the actual stone cold law on that. Um, so for me, I've just done the two games I actually own. And I thought, let's, you know, at least then I'm, <laughs> I'm covered. Uh, I'm not going to show you these games running because this is for educational purposes only. And again, I live in the UK and I, I haven't got a clue if ROMs are legal or not, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, this is this is uh, Shiny Force. So let's configure files. And uh, because I've chosen to, uh, to run this, where is it? Hmm. Uh, run this in the DJ Genesis emulator, which again, there's more that you can have. Multi, it seems like you can have multiple emulators for the same platform. Uh, when I hit run on this, it'll just give you a full screen window with the game here, and then to exit, I just jam escape a few times. It works really well. I mean, it does work really well. Um, I've tried it with again these two games. Um, and I, tried, I did uh, and in DOSBox, I tried the most. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in Flashback and in HL 94. And they all work fine. Um, there is a couple of features I really liked, actually. If I go into configure, there's a, a feature here which I thought was smart. I think it was in system options. There we go. You can go um, turn off monitors. So I can go like turn off. If you've got multiple monitors, I want to play it on DVI 1. I want all the other monitors turned off. Um, I can see that being pretty useful. I mean, I've got two monitors, and I usually want them both on. But uh, if I did want to just like, I just want to play Flashback or just want to play NHL 94, I could see why turning off the other monitors is a smart idea. So I did a bit of trying with it, and it seems to work. Um, I also like the fact you can switch resolution and then switch back afterwards. Um, that's that's smart. You just restore resolution when, when the game's done. Uh, all cool. Uh, weird that it's not a done button, it's an edit button. So I was looking for the done button, and yeah, you hit edit, and that's, that's the button that says apply, basically. Uh, weird decision there. And uh, when you look at Steam games... It obviously picks up the artwork from Steam. It's just using the standard API to pick up the artwork from Steam. Um, I was half hoping there'd be some kind of lookup for retro games. Uh, there doesn't seem to be. You have to supply your own art. And I assume, again, that's just in configure. There you go. Just just click on the banner and just find your own banner. A little bit of a shame there isn't some kind of like system to auto lookup because if people are using Lutris, I would think a lot of duplication of efforts going. I think like Flashback's a pretty popular DOS game. Um, it's also like available on the Mega Drive on uh, on 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 um, on the what other platforms it on. Yeah, the point is it's on a few platforms, um, and the artwork's not going to be drastically different. So it'd be nice if it pulled from some kind of like you know like the old CD DB databases where it like pull the artwork for the album and stuff. It'd have been I would have been nice to see them try and set something like that up, which is like take the concept and then push it a little bit further to make to go from being 
a pointless list, like a, a semi-pointless list of games to go, oh, that's actually pretty nice. That does something different and new. Um, perhaps I'm asking too much because, again, it's an open source project. And it, it, I'm not, it seems to have had a recent version. And it seems well supported, but they probably haven't got time to be like indexing artwork and that takes space and stuff. I mean, that can't be easy. Um, or maybe like even if they just had a torrent file. Like, just throw a file on torrent, which is like, this date, here's a shitload of artworks we did with just that will just pick up automatically. There are ways of doing it, obviously. Uh, I would be interested to see how well the UAE works, because UAE is, yeah, it's it can be uh, difficult, to say the least, to get that bloody thing working properly. Um, and I guess it wouldn't actually take care of work, though, unless you added that as an actual file. Uh, Libretro... Nice to see, but I've always been confused. Like, if you're a newcomer, Live Retro doesn't tell you the platform. And all these things, like Dolphin, doesn't tell you Wii games, doesn't tell you um, it's GameCube games. Platformed on this side, to me, would be far more use than runners um, for the audience that would enjoy this platform. Now, things it doesn't do. Um, things that it really, really should do is... I could see this being amazing if I could have a Steam Big Picture mode or something like you know, Steam, something like a Steam Big Picture mode. So I can go, here's all my games. I hit the Big Picture mode, and then I've got like a platform that's not Steam that I can just load all my games off. That'd be badass. I could, I'd actually bother setting everything up and like using that because that'd be pretty cool to use. Um, I could see that being a point. I, I could see the purpose of it. And that if you look on the website and we search on about. There is it talks about upcoming features on here, or the, there was. Website's not that quick, but uh, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's a nice looking website. It it's serviceable. It yeah, it's it's reasonable. And then this, also this thing about adding games, it does seem like that they are doing the artwork when they add a game officially. Um, I don't know. It just seems just seems a bit more mature than it should be. And yeah, that it does seem that the bloody web page is not loading. Hmm. That's interesting, Lutris. Uh, but anyway, if you go, if you do get the website when it's working, because yeah, this is not the first time this has happened where I've done a video and the website's packed up. Um, if you uh, if you do, maybe I can go back. I had it. There you go. I had it. Oh, yeah, I had it earlier. Yes, cashed it. Um, it goes down here and it says support oh, supported game platform. Yep. Uh, and there was a thing somewhere where it talked about future updates. Obviously, I can't find. Oh, there's a lot more to come. Uh, yeah, there's uh, some planned features for the future. Humble and GOG support. Mass import of emulator ROMs. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's the bit. That's the point where I'm on board right there. Um, Gave saves management. Yeah, like we're halfway there. These these two things right here, these are like killer features that really make me want to use this application. Joystick configuration with GUI. Didn't even occur to me it wouldn't have that. Um, so that seemed like another one missing. Uh, archive your installation files on external drives. I can do that myself. That's not a problem. Um, community features, friends list, chat, yeah, all that is cool. I like all of these ideas, all this, basically, all this stuff right here, or most of this stuff right here that you're implementing in the future. When that's in there, I'm going to come back to Lutris because I think that's bloody brilliant. I think these things will take it from here to way up here and make you know really give me a reason to use it. Um, it'd be nice to be able to add loads of people, friends and stuff to this platform, then not have to add them to Steam because it's just sort of ubiquitous. That'd be nice. Uh, some uh, interesting stuff here um, about uh, contributing to the project, about the team stuff, all very cool stuff, very uh, a well put together open source project and I really wish them well. I mean, I honestly wish them well, I really hope they do well and I kind of like where they're going, you know, um, I think in the next couple of releases they're going to be at the point where I'm going to go, yeah, this is this is worth looking at. Now, it's interesting though because Project Ascension. Now, I remember a few months ago, well, probably last year now, actually, um, a few a while back, when Steam upset everyone with paid mods, and then Reddit went, "Screw you, we're going to build our own Steam." Well, that became Project Ascension, which has got some code now, and it's it's not as fast going and as as, as you know heavy handed as it usually it was when they first came up with it, but it's going somewhere slowly. Um, Lutris is already there. Like, all the stuff they're talking about implementing in Project Ascension, literally, Lutris has got it all right now. So if you are interested in the Ascension project, or Project Ascension, whatever it's called, uh, don't. If you're using Linux and you, and you like the idea of Project Ascension, just, just use Lutris. Uh, how does this stack up against GNOME games? Well, even though they're kind of the same 
thing, or at least in theory, on paper, they're the same thing. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, I'm back in Lutris. I'm I'm behind Lutris because it seems to have more development. And even though there are features that I would like to see, um, I would really like. You know, the, the, as I've said, really features that really are missing. Uh, it works right now. Um. You can throw your games in here, and I know you can do all that with with gnome games. But gnome games, I found, tended to drop off a little bit, tended to to stall, and uh, I couldn't get the retro games working at first. Where this, where Lutris, I just installed it and run it, and it worked off the bat, and it didn't take me long to figure stuff out. Uh, so yeah, I think Lutris is at the moment a better project, and I think given the head start they've got on gnome games at this point, um, I would guess that Lutris is the one to back. I think if anything, the Gnome game guys should just be like, just do an interface for Gnome. Here's some money. That seems to be what they should be doing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really... Other than coming back to the point that I'm not the audience for Lutris, I don't have anything overly negative to say about it. They're trying the right things to do something that I'm not sure I need, but kind of interesting enough to go, maybe I need that in the future. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's Project Lut. That's Lutris. I think I want to say Project Lutris. That's Lutris, open gaming platform. Um, especially useful if you're not a fan of Steam. I think that's what it comes down to. If you're a big retro gamer or you're not a fan of Steam, just install Lutris and give it a go. You'll probably have a great time. Um, that is my advice to you. I've also got told by a few people that it does work very well with wine. And when you install wine games, it sometimes works a lot better than expected. Um, because whoever sets up the, uh, the the install pattern or whatever they're calling it, install template, does a good job. And I've I've heard stories of a couple of people now where things have worked a lot better than expected in Lutris um, versus just setting it up yourself. So there is that, but I can't verify those statements. So yeah, with that said, uh, I recently did a collaboration. I did a uh, a game first look, one of my usual stuff for Linux Game Consortium. That's LinuxGameConsortium.com. Um, and I also did a video, so if you want to see that video of me talking about Slayaway Camp, you will have to go to their site, which if you scroll down will be the very first thing in the in the description. It will be a link to the, this article that I wrote for Linux Game Consortium, and under that will be a link to the video I made for Linux Game Consortium, and uh, then there'll be the usual stuff about this actual video. But uh, yeah, um, the Slayaway Camp, if you want to know what I thought about that, you'll have to go and visit those guys. Thank you for watching. I've been HexDSL, and I'll be back again at least, probably, I would guess, tomorrow with more nonsense. Thanks for watching. Bye.